I don't remember being taught about consent at school other than no means no. What I do remember is being told not to walk home on my own or I'd risk being raped by a stranger in a dark alley. But when I was raped, it was not in the street but in my own house. And I had taken the precaution of being walked home by someone I knew. It was the first social event of that academic year and it had been a fun night. It was everyone's favorite time of term. Lectures had not been properly begun and deadlines were still far from our minds. I drank, laughed and danced until I was ready for sleep. As I was leaving the club, a guy also at the social said he lived near me and offered to walk me home. Walking home alone late at night in the dark was something I actively tried to avoid, so I gladly accepted his offer. We had met only a few weeks before, so conversation was light. We chatted about the night and what to expect in the new term. When we got to the steps that led up to my house, he politely asked if he could pop inside for a glass of water because he was feeling unwell. Maybe this is when I should have heard alarm bells. But even as I was pouring the drink in my kitchen, nothing stuck me as a miss. Not until after he had finished the glass and the pittance was over. With his first demand to go to my room came my first rebuff. My first spoken, no. To this day, it still strikes me how a charming disguise can so quickly disperse and into aggression. Despite my refusal to go to my room and my repeated attempts to get him to leave, he was relentless. Why would you let me in if you didn't want something to happen? The more I said I wasn't interested, the more forceful he became. I lost count of how many times I said no. And then suddenly there was someone physically stronger than me refusing to leave until he got what he wanted. His hand grabbed my arm so fiercely that it became instantly clear that his intentions had never been to get me home safely. It is a strange feeling being so paralyzed by fear in your own living room. In that moment, I realized saying no was not going to be enough. He took off my tights. When he was done, he finally left. The next day, I locked myself in my room, only leaving to shower away the reminders of the night before. I lay there overwhelmed with disgust, self-blame and guilt. I never reported what happened to anyone in authority. Who would believe me if I did? I had been drinking. I let him into my house. I didn't physically try to fight him off. Fear took over. Surely that means it was my fault. <laughs>